So here's a few uh, episodes, a brief primer on After Effects and compositing models into shots for video. It's easy enough to do this in Photoshop, so we'll take it another step and do it at 30 frames a second. Or 25, 24, or any other various numbers that you may be using <coughs> in your own country. So uh, this is the basic After Effects window. Let me see if uh, I don't think the commands are probably showing. There we go. So anytime you open up After Effects, this is basically what you're looking at. The first time you open it, it'll be a different kind of screen. But the main windows are Project over here, Composition, which is your viewable window, which we'll get to, and then your Timeline. So, uh, yeah, there's not a lot to it. Just start right-clicking places and open up some files. So in this case, this is all the uh, Trek videos that I recorded in front of the green screen. So we'll talk about uh, system requirements for a minute. I'm running a dual core 3 gigahertz. Uh, old style dual core, not the core duos. Got a couple gigs of RAM, plenty of fast hard drive, empty space there. And uh, this is still chugging at 1280 by 720 progressive video, generally speaking. So uh, I may cut some places, I may fast warp, I may just uh, drop bits out entirely get through renders which uh, we'll get to in a little while so uh, the first thing here we want to do is start organizing stuff I happen to know a few folders that I want regularly and one of them will create themselves in a minute so we'll take our footage believe me once you start getting a whole ton of uh, files going on, it gets really complicated to stay organized first thing up. So you got this footage, you can't see it, you can double click on it and there's a little thumbnail there, but big deal. Uh, so what we're going to do here is, let's start with an easy one. Go for this one here. So there's a few buttons down at the, bu at the uh, box here. What we're going to do, I think that was number four. This third one in creates a composition based on the size of the file. So I'm a fan of shortcuts, so I'll be going through this. In some cases, I'll go really fast. In a few, I'll go slow. I'll explain some things. I'll leave other things for you guys to figure out as you go along. I'm just going to give you an overall view of what you want to be looking for and doing for any of your own work out there. So uh, we have our comp which has this little icon here. Uh, it opens up automatically and you can see we got some footage over here in the composition window and there's a whole bunch of buttons down here which I'll get to eventually but this main triangle opens up audio and your transforms. So uh, we'll get to those in a little while. Nothing to worry about. This is where you keyframe everything and all you do to activate them is drag up and down, do any one of these here and you've set a key over there. Then if you change time, you just set a key over here and uh, now you have motion if you happen to move this around. If you find you're getting slow performance, in this case we're working at half resolution let's go down to a quarter because at this point of the stage the uh, resolution doesn't really matter you want fast performance to see what's going on so uh, definitely chug in let's check out the CPU usage over here let's give After Effects if you're working Windows you can go to your task manager if you have multiple CPUs you can decide Let's pull this on screen here. So in your task manager, go into processes. In this case I want After Effects. Let's check the affinity first. Not both of my CPUs don't always show up. I usually leave CPU 0 dedicated for After Effects. And uh, even though After Effects is 
utilizing uh, both cores it only ever takes up let's cancel that a second so right now After Effects is on the CPU when it's set to use both CPUs all it does is take half of each it's still only using 50% of your total so I just lock it down to one processor and give it a high or real-time priority and now if we go back here and that'll stay on top watch the performance boost over here all my other programs are running on a different CPU because I've set their processes all to uh, the other one So in this case, scanning through all this footage here, this is 60 seconds of raw footage. So what I'm looking for at this point are some shots that I want to work with. That one kind of looks cool. So when I initially started shooting the models, I did uh, different shots as different clips. Later on, I just got a bunch of different shots on the same footage, so I got to go through now and cut all those down. This one at somewhere in five seconds looks all right. Let's uh, start clear of it. So on your keyboard, and I'll show you this over here, two uh, keys that you want to know are B and N. So you'll see here that we got an overall timeline. The top one stretches you down to frame counts all the way up to your total composition of 60 seconds and you'll see how that gets useful later. Then you have this work area bar here. Quick way to set this work area bar is the B key will bring the front to wherever your time marker is and your N key brings it to the end. So here's your new frame range out of all 60. Another quick shortcut I'll show you is up here under composition, trim comp to work area. You can't do this trick on a Mac, but this is a regular one I always use is Alt C W. So Alt C opens up the comp, W is the trigger letter for work area. So it's a nice little shortcut there that you will use regularly. So looking through the footage here, now working with a shorter area, it's going to be easier to preview everything and you know what you want to get. This is a total of 6 seconds so I can probably trim it down even more. Let's see how this plays. Spacebar plays, and another one I'll show you is zero. What zero does, once it actually kicks into working, is uh, caches all your frames to RAM. So it gives you instant full speed playback. Hitting the spacebar gives you performance playback, which will be less than your 30 or 25 or 24 frame shots. So. I'll probably uh, cut here for a few seconds and get back to you when this render is complete. We'll see what it looks like.